people have probably heard that blue light is bad, wear blue blockers. Blue light is wonderful. Blue light is actually what sets this clock in the eye, uh, excuse me, the clock in the brain that signals to the rest of the body. It creates a state of alertness and well-being throughout the day. And it sets a timer of about 16 hours for when you're going to get sleepy later that night. And I'll explain the mechanisms in a moment. Light seems to impact the way we feel, how we learn, and how we sleep. How does light exposure or sunlight exposure impact the way we sleep? During the day, we have the opportunity to interact with light in various ways, and our cells use that information. But maybe you can take us through how we can use light to get a better night of sleep. What light does is it sets the foundation of our abilities, and it does that indirectly and directly. The way that we function is by way of our nervous system. Our nervous system links all the organs of the brain and body. So we've got brain, spinal cord, but then of course, spleen, heart, lungs, et cetera. And the nervous system is the system that coordinates all of those. Um, and the nervous system therefore is without question, the most powerful organ system of our body. And it acts as a conductor. It is locked inside of our skull and body, and it has no knowledge of the outside world and vision. Um, which involves photons, light energy, um, reaching the eyes, getting converted into electrical signals is the way that the nervous system decides when to be alert and functional and when to be asleep. And it also is what determines all the various little oscillations in ability to focus and um, creativity and all the other things that we consider life. When you wake up in the morning, you're brain and body have effectively been in the dark, regardless of uh, what sleep environment you happen to be sleeping in. And you have a set of neurons, nerve cells in the back of your eye, and a little structure called the neural retina. It's a little three-layered structure. And those nerve cells are not involved in detecting the shapes of things. What they are essentially looking for, what activates them is bright light, ideally from sunlight. And when bright light, ideally from sunlight reaches the eye, those particular neurons send a signal off into the vaulted dark of the brain. Uh, they do that by way of a little wire called an axon. Uh, and they communicate with an area of the brain that's vitally important called the hypothalamus. It sits right above the roof of your mouth and it harbors a bunch of structures that are responsible for hormones like testosterone and estrogen, for um, cortisol release um, in other locations in the body basically controls when you're going to be alert, when you're going to be asleep, your hormones, your immune system function, and your appetite and your mood. So this morning signal of getting bright light in your eyes is absolutely vital. Now, how does one do this? The best and ideal way to do this would be to wake up, go outside and get some bright light in your eyes without sunglasses. If you have to wear corrective lenses or contacts, that's absolutely fine. If you think about what corrective lenses and contacts do, they actually focus light onto the retina precisely, as opposed to when people uh, don't wear those. Uh, if they have vision problems, it's because the light actually falls in front of or in back of the retina, so-called you know, uh, nearsightedness and farsightedness. So corrective lenses actually help focus the light to these neurons. Now, the ideal situation would be a nice, bright, clear day, you get five to 10 minutes of sunlight. You don't have to look directly at it. In fact, never look directly at any light of any kind that's so bright that it's painful to look at. But you get some light indirectly through your, into your eyes, some bright sunlight. You would go inside and get ready for your day. By doing that, you, you do a number of things. First of all, every cell in your body has a 24-hour clock, meaning there's a timer that goes from zero to 24 and then repeats. And that's true from the day you're born until the day you die. However, every cell in your body has a its own separate clock. And the way that those clocks are coordinated into coherent action is from a signal from this brain structure called the hypothalamus. And the only way that signal can arrive properly is if you're getting light to trigger the hypothalamus to say, okay, it's the start of the day, everybody start. Otherwise your body slowly over time becomes a little bit of a clock shop where every clock is on a different timer and it's alarming at different times. This is actually what happens when you travel and you get stomach issues or you're not feeling right from jet lag your body clocks are, um, the individual clocks of the cells in your body are falling out of, of sync. Okay, they're becoming what we call um, unentrained or as asynchronous. So you get up in the morning, you go outside and you get some bright light in your eyes. However, many people, including me, wake up before the sun is out. In fact, um, I'm up uh, you know, early this morning and there's uh, very little light in the sky. The sky is just a pale gray right now. In that case, it's very simple. Flip on as many bright artificial lights as possible 
ideally overhead lights, because the neurons in the eye that perceive this light and send that signal to the brain reside in the lower half of the eye. And therefore, because of the optics of the eye, they actually view the upper visual field. So as you'll notice, I've got some bright lights on behind me, um, but sunlight is really the key. And so once the sun is out, it's very important to get outside and get anywhere from, you know, five to 20 minutes of bright light exposure. A lot of people can't afford the time of 20 minutes. If it's a dim overcast day, the remarkable thing is there is more photon light energy coming through that cloud cover than there is from these bright lights of the sort that are behind me here. Now, some people live in an area of the world where it is very dark in winter or their schedule is arranged such they just can't do this within 30 minutes of waking. In that case, there are daylight simulators that are commercially available. They're very expensive. What I recommend is actually something um, quite low cost and works just as well, which is you get a ring light, like the selfie ring lights that the uh, YouTubers and the, and the Instagrammers use, and just put that on, on a table uh, or facing you as you work in the morning. And actually you could leave that on all day. Basically what you want to do is get as much bright light as you safely can in your eyes all day long. And then as little bright light in your eyes as you can between the hours of about 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. for reasons we can discuss. So bright light exposure through windows or, or windshields will not suffice. Those unlike corrective lenses on your eyes, glasses and contacts, don't focus the light to your eyes. In fact, they're designed to filter the very light that triggers activation of these neurons. And so you, the key thing is to understand that um, you, people have probably heard that blue light is bad, wear blue blockers. Blue light is wonderful. Blue light is actually what sets this clock in the eye, uh, excuse me, the clock in the brain that signals to the rest of the body. It creates a state of alertness and well-being throughout the day. And it sets a timer of about 16 hours for when you're going to get sleepy later that night. And I'll explain the mechanisms in a moment. So throughout the day, you want to get as much bright light in your eyes as you can. If you need to use one of these ring lights, great. Some of them are very low cost. I realize everyone has different budgets, but the daylight simulators are kind of ridiculously expensive considering that all you really need is a bunch of bright light in your eyes. However, sunlight is best. And so if you have breaks during the day, go outside, even if you're going to be on your phone texting, if you can take calls outside, do it. If you can get out onto a balcony, do it. If the sun is on the opposite side of the building and you're on the balcony taking a call, you're still getting more photons, more light energy. And a fun little free resource that's out there, there's an app called Light Meter, and uh, the photographers will know um, about this. Light Meter, uh, you basically open up this app, you can press it in the direction, uh, you point it, excuse me, in the direction that you're um, looking, and you can press the little button and you'll see, it'll tell you how many lux, how much light energy is coming from that location. It's approximate, but it's pretty good. And you'll notice that on a dim overcast day, you're getting, you know, 8,000 lux uh, of light coming to you. And then you'll point at one of these very bright artificial lights in your home and you'll look at, and it'll say 800 lux. And go, wow, how is that? Well, it's because there's a lot of light scatter in, in the outside. So you, you don't perceive it as a focused beam. So this, this behavior, this, this activity should be done every day. If you miss a day, it's okay. There's a slow integrative system, but you don't want to miss more than one day. Why? Well, one of the key features of every cell in our body is that it's coordinated to a general hormonal signal. Hormones are chemicals that are released in one location in the body that go and act at other locations in the body. And a key hormone for health is cortisol. We always hear about cortisol as a stress hormone, but cortisol every 24 hours, there is going to be a peak in cortisol release. That's non-negotiable. It's a healthy peak. It's the one that wakes you up in the morning, increases your body temperature, which is part of waking up, gives you focus and alertness. It activates your immune system in a positive way, provided you don't have too much cortisol throughout the day. And that peak is going to happen no matter what. If you get light in your eyes early in the day, that peak will arrive early in the day. This is vitally important because one of the key findings in the, in the field of psychiatry, biological psychiatry, is that when that peak doesn't arrive early in the day, it starts drifting later and later and later in the day. And people start getting mood issues. They start feeling irritable. And actually, it's a hallmark physiological signature of depression to have a late shifted cortisol peak. In addition to that, many people who have depression or even mild depression wake up at two or three in the morning and can't fall back asleep. In fact, that's one of the first things that a psychiatrist will ask about if you go into their office. And it doesn't mean that if you're waking up at two or three in the morning that you're necessarily clinically depressed, but it's one of the hallmark features. And many people report 
that just simply getting bright light exposure in their eyes early in the day, ideally from sunlight, corrects a number of these issues. Will it cure clinical depression? Probably not if it's very severe, but many people actually feel better all day long. They sleep better. Obviously, this is a zero cost tool. And when I say we were designed to do this, I, I, I don't get into discussions about design and um, uh, spirituality. As I always say, one thing is absolutely certain, which was that I was not consulted at the design phase and neither was anyone else uh, that I know. So I can't answer questions about that. But these cells and circuits are there for a purpose. They have no other function except to bring information about when there's light in the environment to the brain and essentially to convert that into a bunch of hormonal signals.